All right, everybody, Sylvia here. And today I am at a very unusual spot. This is the Antique Powerland Museum. This is a harvest host site. I am just outside of Salem, which is the capital of Oregon, maybe an hour south of Portland. And so today I want to talk about what is harvest host and then we're gonna walk around this uh, antique Powerland Museum and uh, see, see what the site has to offer. Come on, Myrtle, let's go. All right, everybody, yeah, so I am at the Antique Powerland Museum and this is a harvest host site and just to give kind of an overview of what Harvest Host is, it is um, a website subscription membership service. And there are Harvest Host sites all over the United States, thousands of sites. Uh, there's a lot of wineries, farms, museums. There's two levels of membership. And the highest level includes golf courses. And I have this highest membership and so I can go to any of the sites that are offered on the Harvest Host uh, website and it's $80 a year. I think the lower level may be $60 a year. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but the only requirement is that you buy something. Once you are a member, you can go to any of these sites and it doesn't cost anything to spend the night. So this is a place where you call and you say, can I spend the night with my RV? Uh, you give them the dimensions, the type of RV that you have, and then they you either call and they say yes or no, or you send in an online request. And it's very unusual that I have ever been denied. It's usually like at a very, very small winery where maybe they have just one or two sites. Uh, but today I am at a museum, the Antique Powerland Museum. And the only requirement, uh, prerequisite for staying at any Harvest Host site is that you buy something. So if you're at a winery, maybe do a tasting, buy a bottle of wine, at a farm, buy some produce, at a museum, like today, I'll get a ticket and I'm gonna walk around and see what this museum has to offer. So this is the Desertel building. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And this is the entrance to the museum. This is where you get your ticket. Uh, it's $6 to go through all of the grounds. And you can see it's also a gift shop. They sell all kinds of stuff from coffee cups to wine and knickknacks about um, the Antique Power Museum. Look at this, huh? This here is an exhibit made by the guy who started this museum, Percy Desitel. He handcrafted every single thing in this exhibit. Carved it all from wood, painted, and it's based on a farm he grew up in, uh, in Canada. You can see all the different times of the wheat crop. It's really a beautiful exhibit. And this is a replica of his home that he grew up in. And yeah, the barn. You can see the name Desitel on the barn. So yeah, so okay, let's go let's go walk around and we'll just see what's open and what we can see. So they they have a nice brochure for the grounds and this is for a big event called Steam Up. It's coming up July 24th, 25th. July 31st and August 1st. 
they actually made up this brochure for last year, but they couldn't open because of COVID. And so these are the grounds and there are just a ton of buildings and things to see. There's parking for over 400 RVs. And you can see there's like all kinds of railroad all the way around. And then there's um, a lot of different buildings here. And I think we should just go and walk around and see some of them. Okay, so I am here with Patty and her dog, Roxy. And, <laughs> and we are walking through the Antique Implement Society building. And this is where they take old antique machines and they bring them back to life. And there is all kinds of very interesting things in here. Look at all of the stuff in here. And here's a woman waiting for a train. Well, this one is good. So this is flywheel casting. Wow. You know, steampunk is such a thing now. People think steampunk, but I don't even know what it means. But a lot of kids or young people that are into that style of dressing and whatever it is, music. Yeah. Come here thinking that it's going to be steampunk. Oh. Not steam pump. So right. Is, so this is steampunk. But steam this is pump. right up their alley. There's a but not steampunk. Right. Right. That is a good distinction. So this is 70 horsepower from 1928, built by Wayne Thackeray. Or maybe this is the owner. Maybe he's the collector. He's, he's the collector. Yeah. Let's see what this is. Oh, here's a sign that we can read. So this is a Fairbanks Morse with glass batteries. Two hot tank, circa 1897, stationary power. Wow, and then look at this thing. Oh my gosh, that is intricate, isn't it? So this is a Fairbanks Morse, 80 horsepower. 19,000 pounds, 300 revolutions per minute. Ran on gasoline, 10 cents a gallon in 1910 or kerosene five cents a gallon in 1910. So this is a duplicate of a John Deere shop and it has everything John Deere makes including John Deere bicycles. It's not open now it will be open for the festival. So this is just behind the John Deere Museum and there are a lot of John Deere tractors. Oh, <laughs> look at this little cutie pie on a trailer. Yeah, I bet it's a lot more exciting when the Steam Up Festival is going on, but it's kind of fun to be able to walk around through all of this without crowds. Okay, so here we've got an antique caterpillar machinery museum. You can see some old caterpillar machines sitting out front. So you can see a lot of people are parked in front of this building. And this is an antique car restoration area. Northwest Vintage Car and Motorcycle Museum. And people can come and use this area to fix up their cars. Let's take a look. Oh my gosh, look at this. Cosworth Vega, 1975. 1962, Martinizing Special. Nineteen thirty six Cord Phaeton. Here is the motor on the Phaeton. And then the inside. Be 
be fun to drive around with the top down. Yeah, so here we've got a showroom. Oh, look at this. Thunderbird. These beautiful, beautiful old cars. Nineteen forty nine Dodge, a Jaguar, Pontiac. Oh, what is this old thing? Nineteen seventy Stutz, the Bearcat. It's a replica. I love these kinds of signs. Indianapolis, Indiana. Look at the engine on it. Oh, it's fantastic. This is like a mafia car. The gangster movies. Nineteen thirty six Ford. Wow. A Chevy from South Dakota. This is really amazing. You know, you can just walk right up to all of these motorcycles and cars. The Buick. And then this guy's got an organ here. Great organist, Mac Pimentel. And they're working on the pipes. Hello. Hi. So there's like all these organs here. Go ahead, play. Air. air. They run on air. The oh, there. there's a big blower. And, the and there's a reservoir here. Oh my gosh. Look at this. Okay. Oh, look at these drums that are run on air. Oh, <laughs> oh this is amazing. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow, look at this. So, and he is playing it from this organ. I'm Stephen Miller. Stephen Miller? That's Tony Cracks. Tony Craxenberger. He and his wife Judy donated the instrument. Oh, anyway, amazing. So this is all donated. Amazing. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you can see he's got his feet going too. So these guys are going through the keys yeah, to light. find pipes that need adjusting. Okay. You're talking this one right here? Yeah. The month one? That's this? So. That's a B. Yeah. You got it going? No, it's not uh -huh. a B. It was a B. Uh, yeah. Okay. Because I was feeling the air, I thought maybe it was stuck on. So he's putting the pipe back in, and there it comes. You can hear it now. Yeah. Oh, that one sounds really good. I think it's working now. Yeah. yeah. Now it's let's see. Cool. We have the. Let's go to the flutes. Okay. Go into the that's flutes the now. Here, right? There it is. Oh, he's got that's a G sharp. G sharp. That's just air that's coming good. out. I can hear it. He's got air, so it's working. It's just not see, sounding. It stayed on the other day. Okay. There and there is. you go. There well, it is. It it's the a dirt flute. Probably went through. Perfect. It just, oh, this is so crazy. fascinating. Yeah. A cutlass. 
convertible. Oh, and bicycles. A 1957 Schwinn Corvette bicycle. 1941. 1951 Huffman Air Flight. Oh, these are wonderful. Look at this one. This Schwinn has the owner's manual. It was originally $65.95. And there's a classic antique bicycle swap meet, September 12th, here at the Powerland Heritage Park. So here is an Oregon Fire Service Museum. These, all these fire trucks. Klatsk and I. Wow. <laughs> Look at all these gauges. Pump to tank, throttle, tank to main pump, bypass, and then you, and this is where you sit to get to the fire, I guess. I wonder if I can get up on here. Yeah, so this is from up where the firemen sit, and they have access to the hoses. So these fire trucks, protected under canopies, Kenworth, engine number one. And then the hoses are here. Here's a ladder truck, long one. Let's see if I can go around the other side. Keep back, 300 feet. Oh, there's a little bird nest in here. <laughs> it's really stuck in here too. Nothing in it. I'll leave it. Well, and all these ladders in here. So this is the miniature railroad from another vantage point. Looks like they might have a vegetable garden in the middle there. But I bet this is a lot of fun to ride. And I think it might be open on the weekends. And they have the little miniature lights. So Judy, president of the Railroad Association, has just invited me to come into a railroad museum, miniature railroad museum, that is under construction. It'll probably be ready in a couple of years, and it is going to be probably the biggest model railroad exhibit in Oregon when it is finished. So yeah, let's go take a look. Railroad. It's the Siskiyou Line. The Siskiyou Line. Actually, the Siskiyou Line is, starts there. And I'll explain when we went to Eugene. But um, this, um, this line here goes to the Siskiyou Line. And this one is the Matron Cutoff. And I think it was 26, 1926, they started building the Matron um, Cutoff, which went to Roseburg. Okay. Because the Siskiyou Line, in some areas, has a grade of 3.5%. And that's pretty that's steep. steep. And so in some areas they can only take, you know, 10, maybe 15 cars up over the hill okay. and then back down. Okay, it would be too heavy. It'd be too heavy. Wow. This, uh, the depot, it goes into Eugene Yard, but uh, there's a viaduct 
uh, the oh. freeway viaduct. And so you can see how the viaduct is going to kind of um, hide the hole through the wall where okay. the trains have to go. Okay. Wow, very interesting. <clears throat> this in here is our staging area. And oh when my we get gosh. Open, uh, <gasps> this won't Look be at uh, open this. to the public. Wow. But, <clears throat> this is the, um, it's the Helix. And I think there's seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, there's seven. So it comes, you can take the train all the way down around the ramp, yep. all the way from the top to the yep. bottom. <gasps> and so this, this Helix was built to go up to Siskiyou. Okay. To Tunnel 13. Because it's the elevation. Yes. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. The power is on. And all my lights are on. Yeah. The pa so the lights on the board are on. <clears throat> now, when train lead when trains leave the yard, they have to have their bell. They gotta have the bell. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> have the bell That's right. <gasps> there it goes. It almost wraps around Did where that? the caboose and the engine meet on the different levels. Look at the little, the caboose is all lit up. Bye bye. Okay, Tunnel 13 is right up there. Yeah. So then we'll be able to see the train after it's gone through the helix, through all the seven la layers, levels, and now it's gonna come out of the tunnel, and this is the top of the Siskiyou Pass. You can almost tell where it's at. It sounds like it's ready. Yeah, you can hear it. Here it comes. Way deep in the forest. There used to be a town called Siskiyou right there at the tunnel. Oh. In the early 1900s. So there was a town of Siskiyou at the very top of the mountain. <gasps> Look at this bridge it's going over. It's now crossing the Wall Creek Viaduct. Wall Creek Viaduct. It's over 500 feet long. 500 feet long? How high? A lot. It's really high. Oh, I bet this took so much work. Oh my gosh. How long did it take you to make this? We started September three years ago. It just <gasps> came out. Here it is. Here's the train. So it's been almost three years. Wow. And how many people are working on it? Um, about six. Yeah, it's a lot of people. Maybe eight. Yeah. This is Dollar Hide Curve. Dollar Hyde Curve. In the early 1900s, it used to be a bridge, but they filled it in. Oh. Because I believe it was probably too dangerous as a bridge. Okay. Probably took too much maintenance. I'm going to have them stop here in Steinman for a moment. Okay. Where, where are we? Steinman. Steinman. Okay. Steinman. So this is Steinman Station. There's nothing in Steinman. And if you look up here, we've got a road. Well, this is the old 99. Okay. Um, it's still there. Yeah. And so what we saw was this, this big huh. loop. Old 99, it, it goes across the railroad bridge, comes down loops, and then goes under the railroad, under the, the same bridge. Right. That's pretty cool, it makes isn't like it? A, 360. Yeah. And uh, we thought that was pretty neat, so we put it in. That's really nice. Looks like there's been a storm, mm -hmm. a lot of tree debris in the road. Yep. Okay, so we're about five miles away from Ashland.
coming into Ashland. So this is before the Ashland Festival, the Shakespeare Festival. And here it comes into the station. And then we're... And this is the beginning of Medford. And then this is Medford. And um, because of our era, we go from the 40s to 1965. Okay. Uh, we're going to have an icing platform here because they didn't have refrigerator cars. So what they would do is make the ice and then they'd fill the cars with the ice and then put the produce in there. Wow. So here's the train coming through the Amish community going around Gold Hill where gold was first discovered in Oregon. And then it's going over a bridge across the Rogue River. Can you see that coming through the bridge? Maybe like that's better, huh? And then we're back to the area behind the curtain. Well, Judy, thank you very, very much. That was extremely, uh, very interesting and a wonderful, wonderful thing to see. All right, so I am back at my trunk and trailer after just a really interesting walk around this antique Powerland Museum. It's almost like a walk back in time. And this is something that I really enjoy about this Harvest Host membership is it takes me to places that I would not normally go. I have lived in Portland for over 20 years and this museum is not even an hour south of Portland. I've never even heard of it before. And so it's just been really fun to stay here and learn about something new. And then of course, um, I have a very safe place to spend the night and all it cost me was a six dollar ticket to go walk around a very interesting museum. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about this Harvest Host and this Antique Powerland Museum. Leave a comment in the comment section below. You know how much I enjoy hearing from everybody and please remain safe and healthy and I will see you in the next video.